one of the the nice things that I see is that energy is not all powerful. It's very important, but it's not all powerful because, uh, first of all, you don't have that much. I have 12. No. I don't have 50. No. Right? So I have 12 and 12 might make me survive. And I had to spend it. Yes. Right. The, I couldn't get away yes. without spending. Now, if you didn't I'll spend it, you would have died. I knew, yeah. I knew that if now looking back on it now, I know that I would have tried harder to make that first stealth roll because then I could have used my dirty fighting against a yes. distracted enemy. Of course. And so sure. you see, there's uh, there's a little system mastery at work here. But yes, but oh, there is. There absolutely is. So, but but now I get it. Now I would say, okay, I would put a lot. Of, I'd actually throw energy in at first to get as much yes. advantage as I can. But that's dangerous okay. because then you have dropped some energy to protect yourself for later. Yes. So that's good. Actually, I think it's it's kind of a nice setup. Um, what is also important is that you are, see, as we saw, even with the uh, step-ups, bad rolls will catch you. Yes, and of that's course. How, and, and we need to embrace them. We need to say, oh, good. Oh, good. I got a, a shitty roll. It's not the top of the bell curve, like Steve Jackson yes. promised. Steve Jackson yes. promised that if I rolled 3d6, it would always be a 10 and an 11. Right. And you know, that's pretty much the assumption of all those games. Yeah. And so, no, it's not. But that doesn't, doesn't really happen. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it's so, more stable. It's not that much more stable. Right. So Right. And so, um, and although I had some pretty good dice going in, I didn't always get a good roll. Fine. No. So, um, but my energy kept me alive long enough to get out there and hope that my <laughs> friends are going to catch up soon yes right yes um and you know who knows they might show up later with the thing and say hey the minotaur was out of the room for some reason that was easy right mm -hmm. no. thank yeah. you so much for their their, their help so yeah. uh, or something like that but so um we can uh we can also think a little bit now about whether there is enough bounce and it seems to me that with the dice rolls you are you have enough bounce okay. in the outcomes okay. this is very very brief contact but i'm very skilled or i'm very experienced with these this exact role yeah, yeah. <laughs> this exact kind of movement oriented fighting so okay. um so as far as i can tell anyway um what you have is a really nice blend of commitment to the dice because what i was afraid of is that you were going to have enough energy <laughs> to ignore 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 oh and now i'm out of energy so now i guess i have to you know I yeah have to no, no, no it's that's, not going to not happen. like that so that's really yeah. the biggest problem if energy were like a, this shield that you could just throw up for a while that'd be one thing now you need to make choices right. with it that's exactly so. it now, the next step that I want to ask you, and it may seem like a strange thing, uh -huh. is, and but there's an important reason. Once people create a beautifully working system of character creation and combat, once they have set it up and they have playtested this scenario 50 times across all the conventions, and uh -huh. they know that all the choices for character creation and they know that all the choices for combat and the numbers and the chance and the choices work really well. They have no idea how to improve characters without ruining the game. Yeah, that's why everything you see in terms of talents and it's all uh, uh, basically I've not really worked much on that. I want to make sure the engine, the core engine works. It's what I said to you the first time we met. I need to be sure the core engine works right. with the least, but with as little detail let's as look possible. At it. What, is, what are your ideas now? How do how does my character improve? Okay, so basically the dice you see stats. Uh, I will. I need to explain briefly what our character works. Our character is made of three parts, and the top part you see the heritage thing, 
That thing is something that I think the closest thing you can think of, and this is an old version and it's not reflective of how it works now. I mean, it works like this, but the kind of talents you get are a bit more complicated. And I think the closest thing you can think of that is the nature in Burning Wheel. I mean, right. it's your powerfulness as a, Again, as a being. Again, I, I the answer that I want is much more literal and less explanatory. Okay, so, so basically, she can, well, the human part, the heritage doesn't. She's a level two human. It only moves if the group decides, okay, we're going to change. Right, okay, the that's mood. one thing, right? Then there is the, the life part thing. Uh, that yes. changes, yes. but it, it doesn't pertain really to combat. I mean, it did because in this case, we didn't do one thing because she is touched by darkness. So she has uh, uh, the devil on the shoulder thing. Basically, yes. she has two, one, two pieces, yeah. one evil familiar. Uh, she's been cursed in somehow. So the, the crow on her, on her shoulder, uh, basically what does it do is that she can get to spot some result on her rolls for good fortune. On, um, she can get to spot some result on opponent's rolls right. for bad fortune. So I would, the, have the, named, I would have named a, a number in hopes that the Minotaur rolled it. Let's say that, no, let's say that the, 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 the a one in his roll, he would have been able to penalize it. Some. Yes. The crow would have had some bad luck, but right. Right. the narrator can do it to you. Got it. Okay. So, but, so but, but to answer the question, level can now go she off, goes, yeah. Level he, he, can she go goes off when the last level. It, but also you have a system of some kind for the life path to go on to. The thing that you, matters now is the class level. She will level up in class. So she will get level up, level two in her scoundrel career, uh, in, the, in the scoundrel There it is, class. another level, yes. Yeah. So that's she will, right. So, okay, and how, what criteria do we use to level up in scoundrel? Okay, basically, it's uh, uh, the, right now the dynamic we are thinking of. Is, uh, uh, I'm thinking of is uh, something like milestones because I don't really like XP accumulation, not out of any you know I design thinking, but just annoys me to have to write up uh, uh, every session. One thing I noticed in fourth edition, that's another yeah. thing that people seem to miss a lot pretty sure that maybe 1% of the people who played that game actually read it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the uh, but one thing you can do is to completely ignore experience points. Yes. I you never treat used encounters. The levels are a matter of number of encounters of particular. 13 games. encounters. You, yeah, right. yeah, we get you to it. And, uh, and you're even allowed to cut that in half if you want a faster game. That's explicit. <laughs> Just cut it in half. Five. Yeah. That, that, that's more or less the system I'm looking at. Right. I mean, look it's, it's, at that's what it reminded me of, and it's very practical, completely understandable, and there's not even a not even a bit of math. Yeah, so, yeah. It's, yeah. you say, yeah, it's, it, that, that, I want something like that. Right. And so basically, you get you gain one level mm -hmm. skill, and uh, okay, what happens is that you get some points. Right, and then you can distribute uh, to spend. Them. Yeah, basically, w classes works like each class tells you uh, from which booklet ca you can buy skills. There's the marshal. There, there's the if you see in the page the the other the ability page the categories marshal thief. So basically, it means it's marshal, but only thieves can buy it. Right. Subterfuge. You, you, you I mean, buy more that's skills. Like, that's, again, okay. I don't care. There's a booklet. yeah. I know. I get it. I know. I, know. I get it. Yeah. I get it out of the booklet. Right. So let's see if we uh, if we think about this, we have to start thinking about what's the point. Mm -hmm. It's very clear, you know as well as I do, that this is not um, you know a video game where I get to get more abilities and points, and then the foes get more abilities and points, so the fights become more complicated. But that's really the only thing that happens is that we have more complicated fights. Yeah, the chances of everything happening are now effectively the same, which is the curse of D and D Fourth Edition. Right? right, it is. Yeah. Um, now, the only thing that makes D and D Fourth Edition really fun in leveling up are the tiers. Yes, right. Yeah. And so, um, the there are lots of things we could say about how to repurpose it or redesign it, because the skeleton of something really, really good is there. Yes, right. yes, of but course. We're, we don't. We we could talk about that another time. It's a very similar. I mean, the thing is that I thought when I started working with this is 
I'm not going to remake D&D because I have enough respect for that game to realize that it will take not only a lot of work, but a lot of talent to redo that because it has flows, but it Right, but, but it's a lot very, of very powerful. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So the, uh, the, the, to do it would indeed be a matter of, of considerable, you know, yeah. considerable engineering. The only way I would do it is I would have to be playing it continuously and changing the rules as I go. Just play it continuously and just keep changing things. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, but back to our task here, which is to ask if we go up in class. Yes. More or less continuously, not constantly, but there's an, an ongoing, and I assume that that mostly is expressed most of the time by lots of dots in my sense. <laughs> More or less, yes. Right. Not, I mean, it's they are tiered. I mean, you can't say, okay, I'm level next level, I'm going to take a uh, step in martial weapons because that's what happens when you have savage worlds, which you say, I'm a fighter. So I'm, put all, I'm putting all my budget in firearms because I'm really good at shooting. And then you spend the rest of your life on leveling up stuff you don't care about because you're already capped right. in the team you wanted that, to be. That's good. fine, but but still, if I look at a sheet five adventures down the road, I'm going to see more black dots than I did before. More or less, and more, more abilities, more black dots. Yeah, I, I, don't, gear. I, I will see more black dots. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. That's all I. Sorry. Can. If there's an Sorry. order or a logic to it, that's great. Okay. I'll just okay. do it. Yeah. But I see more black dots. Uh, yes. I might see more abilities. I've got four abilities already. Do I, do yes. I see more abilities? Okay. Yes, of course you will. And I might have some different equipment for different reasons. Along naturally, the lines. naturally. Okay. And I promise equipment looks a bit more interesting. Now, in no, I completely get it. What uh, what then do we get if we have the uh, the class, the levels just go on forever? No, you cap at 20. Okay. It's then, very traditional D and D. -ish. Well, you know, it's kind of funny, but people always talk about that. I I played D and D in the seventies. <laughs> no one ever talked about a cap at twenty. No, well, yes, it's everyone we, assumes we, that there was one just because that's where the table stopped. We yeah. never saw. We never thought about a cap. It's no, just one of those didn't. things in retrospect that people claim there was a cap. There wasn't. Nobody cared. No. Yeah, it's just kind of weird, but. No, right. the, so like, here you're there is. 20, which is fine. But I assume that sometime before that, we're going to get to the end of the life path, which I think is the, the real long-term arc of the character, right? The life path describes what... Well, basically, I like stuff, because this is a game in large part killing stuff, and the life path is who you are relative to the world. So if you are a noble, if you are a merchant, if you are a knight, if you are... The life path gives you that. Who are you? I mean, it's it's a very small space in the sheet, but it's the thing you are going to use the most outside of combat. Yeah, I, I see how important it is. What I'm asking is how is the life path as a mechanic related okay. to our experience Leveling of up. play. And don't tell me about how I get to choose to fill things in and how the no, 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 no. get they, all that. Tell they, me it's, instead about, it's obvious from the sheet, tell me instead about what happens when I fill up every box. It's a very good question because uh, the, the conundrum I have right now is that to make it work well for what it is, uh, I need to make a step back. So say, the question, the original question is, uh, how can I play a character that is not combat, maybe particularly combat competent, but has a great importance? So, for example, uh, let's make a uh, Diablo, okay? The first Diablo, the 19th, uh, uh, there is the, the young son of the king, which is dragged by demons, and you have to save him. So, the young son of the king will be a level one character on Zero character. He doesn't have combat abilities, but he's very important relative to the world. So he would have a, a, a lot of dots in his life path because that's what the life path does. It okay. gives you the growth. So, and uh, uh, how to handle that? 
how to make the two elements work together is something I'm still working on. Because if you don't tear it, if you don't make it a progression, you lose something in the game part. But if you don't make it a, prog a progression, you gain something in the way it's a tool to create the world that the, the, the people play. So, for example... It sounds to me as though you've got a mechanics versus fiction dichotomy in your mind. I don't see how that... I don't see how that works. I would say that it's not... I mean, because it makes you creative and puts your character into positions doesn't mean it can't have mechanics effects, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, but the, the question is... You seem to have that, right? You have... You yeah. Know, we have devil on the shoulder yes as fiction and yes. you have these two black dots which allow me to affect things mechanically yes that's great 